The video is specially prepared for the Aka Kazian channel. Friends, I welcome you to the new year, 2022. I wish you health and great luck this year. I really wanted to start the year with a project specifically on discrete logic. What can I say? I love these microchips. Combining them allows you to create many interesting devices. And then I came across a schematic which gave me the idea for a DIY project, a time relay. That is, a device that can be programmed to keep a certain load on for a specified amount of time. Set it for 10 minutes, turn it on, and after 10 minutes the load turns off. Moreover, I had an idea. What if I tell you the whole story of creating the schematic? Not just to explain how the resulting schematic works, but step by step, what was done and what was modified. So let's start with the source of inspiration and figure out how this original schematic works. There are two counters here, K561IE16 and K561IE8, which count the network pulses at 50 Hz, forming the operating time in multiples of 5 minutes, from 5 to 45 minutes. The setting is done using a rotary switch. When the relay is turned off, the circuit de-energizes itself, and the timer turns off. The load is turned on using the same relay. What I immediately wanted to change in this circuit was to replace the relay with a triac, and of course, implement a low current restart button. Unlike in this circuit, where a high load current passes through the button at the moment of startup. Just last year, towards the end, I ordered a small batch of prototype boards in a pleasing purple color. I initially decided to commence the process of assembly with the power supply unit. The printed circuit boards themselves were ordered from the JLCPCB website. There are no complaints about the quality. JLCPCB is a leading manufacturer of printed circuit boards for projects of any complexity and purpose. They can produce high quality boards, even up to 32 layers. You can choose from a wide range of solder mask colors, surface finishes, board thicknesses, and more. Prices start at just $2 for a batch of 5 10 by 10 cm boards, and right now there's a 30% discount coupon for 6 layer boards. JLCPCB offers a full production cycle. Thanks to strict quality control, the boards come out perfectly, every time. Standard production takes just a few days, and for urgent projects, there's even a 24-hour express option. Placing an order is simple. Just upload your project archive with the Gerber files, select your preferences, pay, and you're done. The company also provides PCB assembly, solder stencil creation, and commercial 3D printing services. JLCPCB, easy to use, affordable to produce, and reliable in operation. Check the link in the description. And essentially require a step-down transformer because, in addition to rectified voltage, N, forming the supply voltage, we need to get pulses from the network and count them carefully with a counter. In my case, I installed a 3 terminal voltage regulator for 12 volts in the circuit, but it wasn't necessary. At first, I assembled according to the original schematic, and nothing worked. And why? It's quite simple. This capacitor and resistor form a filter, theoretically blocking high-frequency pulses. The mains voltage is close to sinusoidal. As a result, the signal decay is significantly prolonged, and it's precisely this decay that the IE16 chip counts on. And due to the prolonged decay, the chip starts to malfunction. We need to make this signal closer to a square wave. To start, I added a resistor in parallel with the capacitor. This improved the situation, but the slope was still very slow. I couldn't think of anything better than to use a Schmidt trigger chip. Schmidt triggers were specifically designed to restore blurred edges and decays in signals and eliminate noise. Now, the 50 Hz signal looks sharp and the IE16 chip is working correctly. For a clear demonstration of this, I connected an LED to its fourth pin, which blinks at a frequency of about 1.5 Hz, or more precisely, 50 Hz divided by 32. In general, the K561IE16 chip is a very interesting chip. Inside, there is a 14-bit counter, meaning the chip can count up to 16,384. The next step is to assemble a 7 and circuit using diodes and resistors. 
with this connection, at the third output with a division factor of 8192, the negative part of the pulse is formed, while the positive part is formed, by the sum of the other connected outputs, 8, 16, 128, 512, 2048, and 4096. In total, the duration is 6808 pulses, and the total period of the resulting signal will be 6808 plus 8192. In total, exactly 15,000. And the most remarkable thing is that, if you divide 15,000 by 50 hertz, you get exactly 300 seconds, or 5 minutes. Now we apply the signal to the K561IE8, a counter with a built-in decoder. And, everything works. With each pulse, a logical one appears on one of the 10 outputs. In the original circuit, the signal from the IE8 outputs was fed to a PNP transistor, which closed the relay. In our case, I want to use a triac. For this, we install an opto triac, a couple of resistors, and a power triac. Now, how do we fix the shutdown? Because without auto shutdown, we will always get the same result. The relay will be on for 45 minutes, and then off for 5 minutes. And this cycle will repeat continuously. In the original circuit, there was a relay that turned off along with the load. I sat down, thought about it, and decided to use the remaining and elements from the CD4093 chip, which I used to improve the 50 Hz signal edges, and connected them in an RS flip-flop configuration, which allows it to maintain its state. The logic works as follows. When power is applied, the flip-flop is set, and reset when a high level is received from the output of IE8. We remove this RC circuit from IE8 and then connect the direct output of the flip-flop to the 15th pin of IE8. A high level at this input will reset the counter and restart the count. We will connect the inverted output of the flip-flop to the 14th pin of IE8. A low level at this input will stop the count in the chip. We apply this same signal to the transistor, which we will use to turn on the opto triac. And now everything works, but we need to somehow add a restart button. And the answer is quite obvious. We place a button on the RC circuit, which is responsible for setting the RC flip-flop when turned on. We will short the capacitor to ground. We achieve a restart. All that's left is to add a PNP transistor and another LED to indicate the triac is on and the voltage at the output, respectively. This is the resulting circuit. On the plus side, the circuit has galvanic isolation from the mains, a triac switch, meaning there are no mechanical parts and, consequently, no wear and tear. But, the triac will heat up when connecting powerful loads. I would be very happy to hear your ideas and suggestions on how you would implement all of this. Actually, I made this thing to connect a quartz lamp. Turn it on, lights for 10 minutes and, then turns off. Convenient. Next. The biggest problem for DIY projects is the casing. I packed everything into a junction box, put an outlet for the load, a rotary switch, a toggle switch, a reset button, and a couple of LEDs. It didn't go without some hot glue. It seems to have turned out neatly. Let's test the accuracy of the timer and see how it turned out. My main camera can't record video for more than 10 minutes, so I'll set up a clock in the frame and periodically turn the camera on. And now the maximum time is 45 minutes. We can see. That, the timer works, more or less, but, of course, the accuracy leaves much to be desired. And at this moment, I realize that my idea of making a clock with network timing is a complete failure. The network frequency of 50 Hz fluctuates too much to be used as a basis. Plus, there are various spikes related to turning on household appliances both in my home and in my neighbor's homes. I'll need to set up a test stand and run it to measure the network voltage parameters over time for statistics.
It's actually interesting to see how much they fluctuate and what's really going on there. But for such a timer, I think it's not a big deal, and I'm very pleased with the result. I hope you like the circuit as well. Don't forget to like and comment, as it really supports us in making new and interesting videos. Friends, remember about discrete logic chips. Feel free to experiment and may everything work out. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. And this was Andre with you. Goodbye.